complexity. I will explain what is complexity, aspect ratio of the of the your rupture zone, and the distance to your branch. This has six levels, and each level has three branches. So with the combination of all these parameters, we can create model one, model two, model three, up to, above to model n. And uh, all these models can be used to study future tsunami, or in this case, we will be using them to assess the effects of past tsunami earthquakes. So now I'm going to delve a little bit into the seismological context of Chile. So Chile is located along a very seismogenic margin in the north up until, up until um, Taitao Peninsula. Uh, we have the Nazca plate subducting under the South American plate and from the Chile triple junction point in the Taitao Peninsula to the south, we have the Antarctic uh, plate subducting under the South American plate. This accounts for at least five or so earthquakes with a magnitude of eight or more every century and one gigantic earthquake with a magnitude of nine or more every 300 or 400 years. There is also historical data and records of Chilean earthquakes traced, that can be traced back up, to, up until the 13th century from accounts from Japan and up, to, up, up, up until the 16th century by Spanish monks and conquistadors. The Valdivia rupture zone has seen at least two gigantic more than, with more than nine uh, moment magnitude earthquakes in the past five centuries. This is the 1575 earthquake and the 1960 earthquakes. So these study centers are on the Great Valdivia earthquake. It's the biggest earthquake in the recorded history. This earthquake ends a 30, approximately, approximately 33 hours long sequence of earthquakes that started with the Concepcion earthquake in the day before, the 21st of May. The rupture of the Great Valdivia earthquake spanned about 1,000 kilometers from the Gulf of Arauco up, up until the Taitao Peninsula. And it affected an estimated 2.5 million people in Chile and in other parts, parts of the world, causing about 2,000 deaths. Material and infrastructure losses were valued at between 500 and 700 million US dollars. Dollars. What is important about this earthquake? Well, uh, well, I said that this was the biggest earthquake in recorded history. And in, for this reason, this earthquake has been deeply studied and several source model ha models have been computed. Starting with the Barrientos and Ward in 1990, the Fujin and Sadake in 2012, which uses tsunami and maligraph data and the Moreno et al. in 2009. This is an example of the rupture model from Moreno et al. 19, um, sorry, 2009. This is the sleep model, and this is the deformation model. You can see that the sleep uh, reached up to 45 meters, and the deformation went up to, up to 12 meters. Now, I'm going to talk about the methodology of this uh, study. This methodology can be divided into two distinct and successive sections. The first one is the model generation. The model generation uses using the logic tree approach. Start with the generation of sleep distributions. And then these sleep distributions are filtered using empirical relationships relations, I'm, I'm sorry. And with the rema remaining models, we compute the vertical deformations using the Okada 1985 solution. Then with the, the restriction of the displacement models and deformation models, according to empirical relations and to deformation data, we can model tsunamis. First with a low resolution model and then we filtered those low resolution models 
using wave height data and historical accounts. Then we, with the remaining models that pass this filter, we will perform high resolution models in order to assess uh, and filter with inundation data and more detailed data that I'm going to delve for, uh, further in this presentation. And finally, with all these models, with all these restrictions, we will start the analysis of these models. The statistical analysis of the remaining models is based on the methodology proposed in Normanio 2021. Um, it, it surrounds about uh, around the, the analysis of the logic tree branches and slip distributions along strike and along deep of the rupture of the displacement models. One of the one of the things that Menu proposed is the analysis of the models divided in divided in segments along strike and along deep using their commutative density distribution function. This is to say that for each segment of this rupture model, we will compute their uh, CDF. Then we will analyze the virtual micrograph wave height time series. And, at, and last, we will, we will perform a comparison of the results with known and published models of the 1960 earthquake source models, such as the Moreno et al. Uh, 2009. So this is a summary of the software of the methodology of the numerical methodology that I'm, that I'm uh, creating right now. The main body of the, soft, of the software consists of four independent models. The first one is, is the one that generates the random displacement models and restrict, restricts them. The second one is in charge of modeling tsunami in low resolution and in high resolution and restrict them using paleo tsunami data. The third one uh, is the one that is in charge of automa automatically analyze these, these results. And the fourth one is a module for post-processing this data, namely to plot maps and plot time series, et cetera. These modules are designed to operate sequentially. However, and in this fashion, it can function in parallel with as many cores at the same time as branches in one level. This level can be chosen of the logic tree. So if one of the levels of the logic tree has six uh, branches, we can perform um, random displacement models and generate random displacement models with six cores in parallel. However, each module can operate independently from each other in the case of, of one wanting to just generate random display, displacement models or just performing tsunami modeling or just using the post-processing tools for plotting maps or time series. So, in order to do this, each one of has a parent code that calls upon independent Python modules. And there's also a master code that call all parent codes for sequential operation. So we have a master code, which calls upon, to, uh, upon the module one, then module two, module three. And each model has a parent function that can work independently from each other. That that depends with the pod Python module, and it's the same for each one. And this is a flowchart of the random tsunami source generation. First, we start with the generation of random slip distribution using logic trees, using the combination of parameters that we talk about. First, we assess if the distribution is smooth. If it's not, we discard the model. If it is smooth, we search if, it's, if it complies with physical requirements such as, um, sorry, with physical requirements such as the, the ones proposed by um, I'm sorry, uh, Molina 2020, such as the 
uh, and gravity anomalies, um, frictional asperities, uh, etc. If it complies, we compute vertical deformation. And then we test again, does this vertical deformation comply with deformation data that we have? If it does, we model a low resolution tsunami. We test if it complies with uh, wave arrival data. If it does, we model then a high resolution tsunami model to test if it complies with inundation and wave height data. In each one of these steps, if it doesn't comply with data or empirical relation or physical requirements, we discard the model and start again. However, if it passes all these filters, we save the model, save the branch parameters, and start analysis. This process is made for each and every one of the combinations of the logic tree. First, with the statistical analysis, we will perform an analysis of the di dis displacement distribution along latitude or along strike, and the displacement distribution along dip or with longitude. Then we will divide the rupture zone in different segments following Normenio 2021. For this proposed method methodology, and up until this moment, we will we are proposing three divisions along deep associated with lace domain domains, and five di divisions along strike north north central central south central and south. And for each one of these segments, we will compute the CDF. The CDF will then be compared with the known and published models of the uh, 1960 earthquake. And also, we can compute virtual myographs of the tsunami models. And this is an example of the same sleep or the same random sleep distribution that I showed in the previous slide. This is the registered at the station three, this one, from Moreno, from the, the deformation model from Moreno et al. 2009. And this is um, the result of the, the, the tsunami modeling using the deformation in the, uh, showed in the previous slide. The RMNC of, this, the bo of both of these uh, time series 1.38 meters, which is not, not as good, but it shows that in what fashion we will be comparing this, this time series. So the hypothesis, the research, research questions, goals, and objectives. The hypothesis. The estimation of the most probable source model of the Valdivia 1960 tsunami, such as the sleep distribution of of the rupture, the geometry, and the rupture limits obtained via analysis of random source models generated using a logic tree approach will allow to achieve a solution that converges to and satisfies the available paleo-tsunami geodetic deformation and manipulative derived data. The research questions that drive our study are is it possible to characterize the source of a tsunami, uh, of a historical tsunami, such as Valdivia 1960, in the Chilean margin, based on restrictions given by paleo tsunami records, namely deformation data, marigraph derived data, uh, diatom data, etc.? And does a logic tree structure approach to generating random source models allow, uh, allows to converge to the source model of a historical tsunami? So these are the questions which drive the following, res the following research. The goals. The main goal is to estimate and characterize the source model of the Valdivia 1960 earthquake using a logic tree approach 
to generate random sleep distributions and restrictions arising from tsunami and geodetic records. And a specific goal is to implement a numerical methodology for the, the generation of random sleep distribution models, then to generate these random distribution models, then compute vertical deformations using the Okada 1985 solution to the remaining models after filtering them using geodetic and deformation data with the remaining models to model tsunami in both low and high resolutions using models that comply with the observations, the remaining models that, that I talked about. And finally, to restrict tsunami models using the available value tsunami data. At the end, we will perform, perform an statistical analysis of the remaining models to study the, its convergence, or its degree of convergence towards the known 1960 Valdivia uh, earthquake source models. So now the expected results and progress made. Expected results can also be divided into two sections. First, uh, there are software related expect, expected results. We will strive to create a suite of open source software for generating these random sleep distributions using Python to automatically, automatically model tsunami to restrict these models, both uh, sleep models, deformation models, and tsunami models with the available poly tsunami data and to analyze statistically these results. And then we will strive to create an easy to use and intuitive user interface to work with and to use this uh, software with any historical or poly tsunami data with different types of available data. So this software, as I mentioned, is super, super uh, flexible and accepts a lot of user input. And then on the other hand, we have the expected results regarding the Valdivia 1960 source model. So, we will strive to use the aforementioned software to study the Valdivia 1960 earthquake as a benchmark to test the capabilities of this software. We will try to use the available information on wave height inundation data gathered by Saavedra 2021 from the Valdivia earthquake as an input for the software. And then to test the capabilities of the software by comparing its results with known models, such as Barrientos, Fuji and Sotake or Moreno 2009. The progress made. All of these things that I will list up until now are completed. So we have, we have all the codes for generating sleep models. We have all the codes for computing vertical deformation, all the codes for restricting models using empirical relations, physical restrictions, geodetical and deformation data, and wave height and inundation data. We also have the codes for automatic tsunami modeling and codes for post-processing, as I said, for plotting maps, deformation, and sleep, etc. All of these codes are in are available in GMT and Python 2.7, why Python 2.7 and not Python 3. That's because one of the main modules and packages that this software uses was at uh, the moment of when I started, just available in Python 2.7. And in order to ensure compatibility, I had to do this in Python 2.7. This is an example of the one of the scripts for of the post-processing suit. The work schedule. So I divided this year in four trimesters. First is, is to, my first task, I'm sorry. My first task is to automatize tsunami modeling, which I already did. Then estimate wave heights and run up, apply restrictions based on pilot tsunami records. I'm working on that. Then we have to uh, make the final definition of the statistical analysis methods. I said, as I said, we are basing our, our research on Armenia 2021, but we want to improve our, uh, on, on this regard and to apply more sophisticated uh, statistical methods. And in parallel, I'm going to be modeling 
and generating random sleep models of the Valdivia 1960. And also in parallel, I will be preparing the manuscript of this work, my thesis. And as a thank you, this project is being developed under the patronage of the Fondesis project number uh, 1118054, the source characterization for historical tsunamis of central southern Chile, and under CCLU, the Millennium Nucleus Seismic Cycle in Subduction Zones. Thank you very much. <laughs>